Uh, welcome to this uh, episode here on English TV. Uh, I have the pleasure today to talk to Stefano Di Marco from from TechNow or Stefano. Now I have to say uh, both TechNow and Sitma. Is that is that not the, the right the way to say yeah. it? Yeah, it is. Hello, Morten. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me here today. Good to see you, uh, Stefano. I got a press release from you, from uh, from uh, TechNow just a few days ago where you announced uh, the acquisition of uh, of Sitma. Uh, to me, that sounds like a seems like a quite big mouthful, right? Yes. So yes, we did this announcement just a few days ago. Uh, it is a big step uh, for TechNow. Uh, it's a, it's a combination with uh, with a very well known company in the industry, a uh, very very famous brand I would say in the graphic industry, and uh, it's it's a, it's a huge step forward I believe uh, both for Techno and Sitma. Mm. We're of course going to talk about both products and also uh, there is a um, customer. Uh, you have some joint customers, but uh, it seems that there is a perfect match from the sense that there's not a product overlap. But we will talk about that in in a moment. Uh, before we get to that, um, just of curiosity, uh, Stefano, I mean, how long time ahead of uh, the press release do a uh, uh, conversation uh, take before you get actually to sign the paper and everything? Is it like months or years or is it just like something that happens overnight? Well, certainly it did not happen overnight, I can tell you. Uh, was quite uh, quite a long conversation and was uh, at some point uh, you know very intense conversation and then very quiet moments for maybe several months uh, i can tell you that it became a very intense uh, uh, at the beginning of the year uh, and then it was uh, it was a rush for several months uh, focusing from both parties to, to try to get it done hmm. i can imagine that i mean because i mean uh, buying a company it is it is i mean you have to take a lot of things into consideration the the different uh, company cultures uh, uh, the assets the the customers the 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 product i mean there's so many things you have to look into before you can see whether it, it makes sense to invest right it is especially you know when when uh, when it is a company like tech now which is uh, which is making the purchase which is not uh, you know a huge conglomerate with uh, with an m a team uh, internal Uh, so it's really it has been really my father Giuliano uh, myself uh, and a few key people within the company uh, trying to understand uh, whether we this m- would make sense from a strategic perspective and of course trying to to learn the company uh, over this month. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing which uh, which I think is extremely uh, important uh, uh, and and really it's it's behind the possibility to to make it a, a success. Uh, it's uh, it's the fact that whether there is or there is not the shared values uh, between the two companies. Uh, if if there are not shared values, I think it's a lot more difficult, of course, to take the decision and then to make the integration. Uh, if there are shared values, uh, you know, both Techno and Sitma uh, are family-owned business. Uh, are, are companies really dedicated to to their core industry? Uh, if there are shared values, uh, I think uh, the uh, then the decision to conclude from both parties uh, it's easier, not easy. It's never easy, uh, and and also the, the integration afterwards uh, it's uh, it's a, li- a little bit more simple. Mm. And I would say that as you say, uh, the the having a shared value uh, uh, values between the companies, of course, is is. Uh, Uh, make things easier. Um, I mean, you have tried it before because you you acquired a Swedish company years ago. Uh, so you have, a, and I mean, I take that working with an Italian company in in an acquisition process. I mean, you don't have to t- take into consideration language, and I also take that the Italian culture and and maybe is a little bit more easy than when you go uh, in in a different country. To have, I mean, when you look at the process from when you acquired Lasermax to now where you are. Acquiring a Sitma, what is the biggest difference in your in your opinion? Uh, well, uh, you know, definitely the uh, the Lasermax raw system acquisition was uh, uh, in a way a no brainer, uh, as it is used to say in this in this situation. In the sense that, from a from a market perspective, uh, it was a perfect match. Was uh, exactly the same uh, area, no overlapping, uh, a job, great geographical fit, uh, and therefore the decision to to make it happen was. Uh, was taken uh, very quickly uh, the com- the biggest complexity there was the fact that the tech now at the time was a, a very small company uh, we were one-fifth of the size of lasermax 
So the question was whether we would have been able to manage uh, all this. Uh, plus, as you say, the complexity of the culture, because uh, Lasemax uh, uh, had uh, and still has, of course, within tech now, a very strong Swedish uh, presence, but also a very strong uh, US presence. Uh, so it was not only one uh, different culture, but was more uh, and very strong because there were a lot of people and even more people than, than tech now. So that was, um, I think, the, yeah, the complexity there, uh, which which uh, finally uh, actually gave back a, a lot of uh, uh, values to Technow in the sense that uh, Technow is not an Italian company today. Uh, uh, one third is an Italian company, but uh, the, the Swedish and the US heritage is extremely strong. Um, so while when you look at Sitma, uh, definitely from a cultural perspective, it's a lot easier. Uh, then the analysis were a lot more on the tr strategic side, whether there was a, a sufficient enough a complementarity and whether it was, was tech now uh, the right move to differentiate in different industries. Yeah, because I mean, if we look at, at SITMA, and, and maybe we, we should touch upon it in a, in a second, but I mean, if you look at SITMA, it seems that in a way it is a very nice complement to, to tech now's already existing business but as we, as i mentioned before it's not like an overlap of products so it's like a new business area is is it important to i mean is it important to have uh, the the packaging side of sitma and, and and all the things they do uh, is that as an important part of where you see also tech now in the future or is it just because uh, the 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 size and the engineering power and the production power you will have as a uh, larger entity will give you more opportunities in the market or, or how do you see that? Well, I would say that the main drivers behind the decision uh, were two. So the first one was, uh, uh, as you say, Sigma is, is very strong in the, in the graphic segment and that would give us the opportunity to strengthen our presence there uh, with a different portfolio, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, basically the next step of what Technow does today because Technow does all the unwind, rewind, all the cutting, the stacking, the, the book production, book block and book finishing. Uh, and that's where we, we stop today. Uh, and, and then it's when Sigma comes with the with the wrapping uh, and the preparation for the fulfillment uh, of the product. Uh, and even today in the packaging or in the e logistic with the sortation system. So for, for the graphic mm -hmm. segment, uh, uh, we think it's important because customers are really looking more and more for end to end uh, uh, solutions. Maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 uh, years ago, uh, printing was in, in many instances seen as an independent process. So it was uh, uh, basically uh, printing, was cutting, if it was a continuous feed, and then was inserting, basically full stop. Uh, now there is a lot more complexity around it. And a lot of the printing companies uh, are really keen in being on manufacturing excellence. And, and it's definitely not mm -hmm. only one step, it's the complete process which starts a lot earlier, you know, with the workflow, with the data management, with the positioning. Uh, that's how they differentiate from the other companies, then the printing, of course. And then what comes after, making sure they can deliver the product to their customer in, in, in a very short period of time, in a very economical way. So we think that expanding our product range after our nature of product uh, and application uh, gives us the opportunity to be more uh, supportive of our existing customers. So this was, was the first part, uh, Martin. If I can add the second part, obviously, yeah. uh, was to, um, to uh, diversify uh, our presence uh, in a different industry because Sitma has been uh, really good over the years to apply its uh, traditional product range technologies uh, to, to the growing uh, uh, e-commerce segment and to the, uh, what they call the e-logistic. So basically uh, paper wrapping, whatever product uh, in the fashion industry, in the um, textile, in the uh, electronics uh, and so on. Uh, and then uh, sorting that. So once the product is, is packed, that has to be managed in a smart way with smart conveyors and reading codes and delivering it to different exit for the shipping to the customer. So this gives, uh, we believe, to tech now the possibility to be uh, to get strong in a different segment uh, and therefore to uh, balance uh, possible dynamics. Uh, you know, we, we do invest, uh, we, we work in the investment uh, uh, products, uh, so uh, so that always goes in waves. And currently, it's a very good wave for the 
uh, for both industries, actually, both for the printing and for the uh, packaging. Uh, but unfortunately, we know that some days one of the two uh, could 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 see different terms. Mm. So, <clears throat> uh, of course, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so. I understand that. I mean, with the with this with I mean, understand that with that basically with the Sitma acquisition, you can have like everything from let's say where the o, the print OEMs deliver, let's say the printed, and you have the the the, the paper handling, and then now you have the packaging and the logistics as part of the end to end solution. Um, do you see this uh, initially as two very separate processes that eventually can be integrated into one process, or is it? What happens today? You mentioned that you have customers together today. Does that mean that you have customers where they have, let's say, your output is the input for for what they do, and and then you see that as a as a an opportunity to further expand the also the tech now brand into these mm-hmm. types of companies, or or where do you see the the split? so uh, from from what we've seen so far, uh, it is uh, very often different projects. Let me say so. It's uh, uh, not very common that a customer. Uh, is making, let me say, an investment decision for the complete uh, uh, process. So it may be one year for the for the printing, uh, one year for the uh, fulfillment part. Uh, so uh, okay. and, and that's uh, um, still okay, let me say. So it doesn't necessarily to be one comprehensive project from A to Z. Um, but still, it's important for us to be involved in in, in both. Uh, uh in both the th- decisions and we think to give the opportunity to the customer to know that, that they can count on a partner uh, which has an understanding of the complete project because even today still when mm-hmm. customers let's say are, are looking to invest uh, yeah, simply in, in the same printing uh, still they, they need to add automation around that they, there is always chats and discussion about okay but how can i uh, load uh, uh, roles how can i unload the uh, material efficiently how can I reduce my touch points? So, and that's the starting of the fulfillment, uh, you know, because uh, they today it's a separate process, but one day it could be all integrated and uh, and uh, connected together. Mm. Mm. Um, I I mean, obviously, uh, no tech now very well. I was just wondering if you look at the the Sitma side. I don't know much about the packaging and logistics thing. Is that a uh, also, a few players in the market, or is that also, or is that a more competitive market? So you have, I mean, one thing is that you can broaden your your customer base, but is it a, also a competitive market, or that you have to keep uh, being uh, innovative and developing uh, technologies to keep on 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 top of mind with with the customers? Or I mean, I'm, I don't know if you get my question. It's more like you know, tech now is almost like. If, quite few players that you compete yes. uh, directly with but yeah, how is I it can I can tell you for sure that it is a very innovative area otherwise we would have not invested there because that's what excites us it's about innovation of course. <laughs> uh, and uh, mm-hmm. but yes there are definitely more players um, mm. companies which some of them are coming also from the graphic industry some are coming from completely different angles uh, I, I can say that, that today okay. a lot of the focus on, on on the suppliers has been on the on boxes, so more on corrugated uh, um, cardboard boxes. Uh, why Sigma decided to focus more on the uh, paper packaging. So there, there is a bit less uh, competition, but uh, it's it's a huge market, and and I'm sure it's just a matter of time uh, there will be more and more companies coming in. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's a huge market yeah, because uh, uh, I made a couple of examples to the. Uh, fashion and the electronics, but uh, let's think back about our industry, books and publishing. We talk every day about short runs and book on demand. Well, those books need to be uh, packed. And today, to a large extent, is still a manual process. So it's amazing today visiting uh, huge companies uh, which which handle, as we said, really excellent uh, manufacturing sites, uh, but still the packing part uh, is is in many cases a manual, a manual process. So yes, a lot of competitors mm. uh, new will come, uh, but the potential opportunities I think are much much wider. Also, let me say compared to, to our industry, uh, which is uh, which is already a niche. Mm. Um, uh, I, have, I have never been acquired or acquired a company, but I was just thinking that when you look at acquiring a company like Sitma. Uh, one thing is that you look at the products in the market and opportunities from both the techno and the sitma perspective. But how is it when you look at 
let's say the staffing. I mean, uh, everybody talks about labor shortage and everybody talks about how difficult it is to get uh, skilled labor. Do you see a crossover also that you can start developing products and use the resources across the sites and basically use as an opportunity? I mean, you're both uh, experts in paper handling, right? So I just thought maybe it could be interesting to see if you could utilize some of the engineers from from mm -hmm. Sydney also in the tech now. Yeah, and that, that, that's a good point. Uh, I did not mention before, but uh, I talked about the values, but definitely uh, one of the key areas that uh, we, we assess when taking the decision to invest was the people, uh, because obviously that's what makes companies great. Uh, yes, the products, but the products alone are just projects on paper. Uh, you, you need to have uh, that knowledge base, everything you know, which is not written. And, and we were super pleased to find out that uh, in Sigma there are a lot of people which have been with Sigma for many, many years and they have a huge, uh, a, a huge knowledge base. Uh, in relation to uh, cross, uh, let me say, sharing, uh, that's, that's certainly something we're going to um, support and try to uh, facilitate. Uh, at the same time, uh, both teams right now are very focused on, uh, on several projects, so everybody must be uh, really, really focus on concluding them, uh, and then over time, uh, over time, we're gonna try to, yeah, yeah to help them uh, share share the information and the experience, which is which is always, of course, uh, very valuable. Mm. Um, a question that is maybe not so easy to answer, but I will ask it anyway. So uh, I was just wondering if you look at uh, at a company like. Uh, like Sitma and TechNow. I mean, you are both very well known in, in the industry and in the segments you operate. What will the name be in the future? Will it keep the two names or will it be one entity on, in, in, at some uh, point? For now, and we expect for, for, for quite long, so I don't see the time, let me say, when, when this is, is going to change. Uh, we plan to keep uh, the two names mm -hmm. uh, separate uh, because they are, they are both uh, rather strong. And, and in this case, I must admit that the Sitma name is, is even stronger than TechNow. So, you know, they've been around uh, since uh, uh, 1965 and uh, they've become pretty big uh, much earlier than tech now. Uh, so their, their brand has been uh, spread in the industry really everywhere. There is a, a huge install base and, and, uh, and yeah, it would be a really, really a wrong move for tech now to, to cancel that. Uh, so again, we will try to help each other to reinforce the brand and to, and to increase the uh, awareness uh, in those areas where each of, that, of us is, is strong, but the, the two brands are going to stay around for, for long. Mm. And and uh, that, of course, also leads to, I mean, because in the in the press release you set out that it is an uh, acquisition of all the, uh, all, all the assets and all the operational activities. So that means that you are taking over all the employees and all the responsibilities. So that basically means for a customer perspective, there will be no change. No, exactly. Uh, Sigma will continue to operate uh, as, as it is today. Uh, all the people will remain in charge and uh, absolutely we acquired the complete company. I did not mention, but also Sigma uh, has an important presence, uh, uh, in, especially in France and in Japan. Uh, those have been two uh, countries where yeah. also they, they established themselves uh, over 20 years ago. Uh, there is a very strong team of professionals in sales and service support. Uh, and then we have also presence in the United States, uh, which also, yeah, uh, you know, that that's our biggest market, that's the most important market. So we're happy to have uh, even extra resources available in the United States. Yeah, because that was uh, like also something that I paid attention to, because I mean, uh, I think the tech now, uh, one of your strong forces is that you have local presence in many markets, but this just add uh, another level of presence in, as you said, mentioned Japan. I couldn't remember about France, but I mean, it is, it must be quite interesting because it is now a bridgehead for further expansion of both uh, Yes, companies. because, you know, local presence, uh, it's also becoming uh, more important, uh, especially when we look at also in the, in the printing segment, uh, let me say, uh, when we uh, discuss about uh, business opportunities with, with the large companies, uh, they, they want to discuss it with the manufacturer. Definitely the distributors are involved and, uh, and we will continue to cooperate with all our distributors. Uh, but uh, still the, the local presence uh, uh, of the manufacturer is, is a plus. So, so in this way, uh, they, we can help each other again to, to, to be closer to the customers. Fantastic. And I was just about to say that, 
uh, I think that everybody understands that uh, uh, one of the reasons why the, the packaging and, and, and logistics is so important for, for companies today is also because when you look at the e-commerce side of it, I mean, you need to have fast, reliable, so that also means that you must have service organizations that can keep the equipment running uh, as, as much as even possible, right? So I think that, that for, let's say, for the Amazons in the world that want to invest, it's always important to have uh, a supplier that can support that that yeah. business globally, right? And that I think is also uh, some of the considerations you have as yeah. As well, everybody to expect to get anything in twenty four hours, right? So there is no, only one way to to make of it course. happen. <laughs> even even yeah. machines and, and service. So right? there is only one way to make it happen: to have uh, <laughs> technicians. We we keep uh, machines up and running twenty four seven, and and support uh, as quick as yeah. possible. Mm. Um, the machines that you're talking about and also some of the trends uh, we spoke about a little bit before the camera was turned on uh, is obviously uh, sustainability. You mentioned the corrugated and, and but that both corrugated and paper based is of course uh, seen as sustainable solutions. But what you're talking about was also with paper based packaging, you can replace a lot of things that today are, are packed in plastic. Is that a something that SIDMA has always been focused on, or is it something that you will be focusing more no, absolutely. on? Absolutely, this is a key a key area of uh, of focus for SIDMA. So sustainability is is obviously a key topic for everybody, for every single person, and and and, and really all all companies worldwide. Uh, SIDMA uh, is really able to make an impact. They have been able to. Um, modify their technology i mean it, it's a fact that uh, a few years ago was all yeah all plastic wrapping and uh, they've been able to modify their technology to support uh, paper wrapping also at existing uh, uh, customer so they they did not uh, have to buy uh, complete new equipment but they could invest in modification and upgrades to move from plastic to paper um and, and today of course uh, that that's uh, that's the key wrapping both for the uh, printing industry for magazine, for newspaper, for direct mail, of course, which is extremely important for Sitma, as well as for the e-commerce. So uh, all the paper which Sitma uh, is using in its machine is 100% recyclable. And as you said, yes, also corrugated is is 100% recyclable, but, uh, but we see an extra benefit of paper versus corrugated. Uh, first of all, is less material. So it's less consumption of natural resources. Uh, it's easier to recycle and it occupies much less space. So if you think, uh, you know, when you, when you order a box and you put it into the into the paper recycling bin, uh, well, that fills up pretty quickly, right? Uh, I see it in my, my house, uh, mm. all the families around and you're using the same bin during Christmas. Well, it's just that you need, you need a, a big truck just, just for a few families. Uh, so paper uh, it w- would require a lot less space, which at the end is also needs to be, you know, transported to the recycling place. So it's again extra consumption, extra pollution. So uh, paper is even more sustainable than than corrugated today, and that's why we we're focusing so much on this. Mm. I also think that I mean, if you look at, at how tech now has worked closely with the print OEMs to print on paper and bring that into also the packaging segment of personalized and a variable date and things like that. I, I think it's much easier than doing it on, on corrugated. Still, either you have a slower speed if you print on something that is already corrugated or you have to go very large if you print on the liner, right? So I think that there's a, a, a few other advantages also in the trends that we see how, how people want to have more and more personalized also in color. So I think that that maybe also gives a new opportunity yeah, on, on yeah. the paper-based. I, I uh, fully agree, you know, uh, like there is a lot of attention uh, by brands uh, in relation to the customer experience. So when, when a customer receives at home uh, a package, uh, it has to look good, it has to, it has to be uh, easy to be open. Uh, yeah, again, it should not uh, take a lot of space in the house uh, and it should be easily recyclable. So the uh, printing part, uh, can play really an important role in making a great customer experience. So today there are already solutions in the market for uh, some level of customization uh, on the printing side, uh, but I think there is still a lot which can be done and we will see a lot in the future. Um, Stefano, thank you very much for your time here with Inkish. Um, I just have one thing, I mean, a couple of things actually, two things. 
I am so happy for you that you got this acquisition through, and I'm so sorry that you probably <laughs> won't have time for any vacation this summer, right? Because you have to work. You right. are absolutely <laughs> right. I, I will take a few days off, otherwise my family will, will kick me out. So, <laughs> but it will be short for sure. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, congratulations one more uh, time here from uh, our side. And uh, I hope to see you in person soon again. And uh, Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you very summer. much to see to you and to everybody. Bye-bye.